So a little background here, the UNICEF says there, that it's an increasingly mainstream view that with basic safety measures in place, the net benefits of keeping schools open outweigh the cost of closing. Even as infection rates are extremely low among students and teachers in public and private schools that are returning to in-person learning, there's a growing body of evidence that shuttered schools are taking a toll on health, welfare, and academic progress of the most vulnerable students. Jones with disabilities, English language learners are suffering the most. Remote school is leaving other children sad and angry. The rising emotional toll is hitting the youngest kids the hardest. Teachers also say they face formal charges trying to educate students virtually. The Centers for Disease Control, citing data that shows infections at schools are often traced to off-campus transmission. The director recently said it's one of our safest prices. But let me just show you where some of the proof is. Just last week, the Napa schools showed data that students whose families chose to keep them on distance learning had tested positive in higher numbers than those attending school in person. In Rhode Island last week as well, and what they showed is that the infections in school were 1.27%, remote learning infections were 1.9%. Those infections in school largely came from outside of school. In other words, yes, there were infections in school, but they did not come from an infection in school. Someone brought it in. So by far, the safest place to be is in school. So in Italy, you see 65,000 schools, 93% of cases, only one infection reported. And in Australia, two thirds of cases were just one. Now, why would it be that homes would be more dangerous for kids? First of all, and we test our own home here, that is the zero ventilation. Uh, you'll see on the various scores uh, when they come up that the top score between good and poor air would be 800. And here in our house, we have 1700. So if we had somebody come in and they delivered something, they fixed something or a relative who's not supposed to come in would come in, then there would be a very high risk of aerosol spread and with no masking and no distancing uh, and more inter interactions outside of the home. If a child's doing distance learning, maybe they go to the market, maybe they go someplace else, it's actually a higher risk. Whereas in school, with excellent ventilation, good masking, excellent distancing, testing the staff, actively discouraging parents from risk taking, there's little student to student transmission. With aggressive questioning, there's very little transmission in schools. So, that's not to say that children don't get sick. They do. There are a million children so far who have been infected with COVID in the United States. Some get quite ill. As you see on the bottom left-hand side here, there's an excellent course. And this one on pediatric multi-inflammatory syndrome uh, show the kids get deathly ill. Some of it's a very small percentage, but it's not to be taken lightly, which is why we want to make certain the kids are as safe as they possibly can be. And again, surprisingly low risk in school. So a layered defense, that is to say, substantial risk reduction, but not elimination. There's no such thing as zero risk, though it can be very, very small. The front door engagement has been great, Nina. I mean, you all have uh, been great about asking tough questions of kids and parents about having people over. Mass, distancing, room quality, testing, and of course, vaccine with teachers now second in line. This is called the Swiss cheese defense, where no one layer here may protect you, but all of them put together provide substantial protection. I like to think of what we call the Fort Knox defense. And that is quite simply to say with even tighter restrictions, we can be very, very safe. 